Hi guys, welcome back to yet another fun DIY sailboat refit video here aboard good old Athena. Let's start with a quick look at the countdowns. My fiance Ava gets here in roughly 90 days and in roughly 121 days we untie the lines, start cruising full time and start the long journey to bring Athena from Europe to the US. Last week I started installing the freezer out in the forward cabin. I was planning on finishing that this week but the weather this weekend is supposed to be really nice, so I'd rather get started on one of the exterior jobs. Yesterday I picked up these shiny beauties from the stainless guy. These are the brackets and the stanchion bases for the tow rail or the mini bulwark. Also this week I'd like to start modifying the aft cabin to be able to fit eight of these lithium cells. That'll give us seven point something kilowatt hours worth of energy storage. And uh, yeah. Hopefully they'll fit. The tow rail or the mini bulwarks here aboard Athena is gonna be an 80 millimeter high piece of wood that runs the entire length of the hull here at the deck hull joint. I've already installed four of the brackets two on either side. The 80 millimeter high piece of wood is gonna get bolted to the brackets with roughly a two centimeter gap beneath the wood to allow water to easily drain off of the deck. All I can do for now is to install the brackets. I don't have the wood yet and I also don't have the stainless steel end caps that are going to go on the ends and in the center of the boat. What I call the end caps look like this. There are three sets, one set for the bow, one for the stern, and one for the center of the boat. The ones at the stern are also going to act as a foot or the securing doodad for the solar arch. And there's also going to be hawse holes in there for leading mooring lines out of so they don't chafe to smithereens on the tow rail. And yeah, I wish I had all of this and could install it right now. I think it's gonna look super spiffy. For now, I can only install the brackets. But being able to install the brackets is really nice because that allows me to install the stanchions like that. And that gives me somewhere to hang my fenders from. Right now, I don't really have anywhere to hang my fenders off of. That is not a good solution. And very, very soon, I am gonna get neighbors here in the slips next to me. So yeah, fenders would be really nice. The brackets are custom made and the angle to which they're bent is different for each bracket. It's not so important for the brackets that are just brackets, but for the brackets that are also stanchion bases, it gets kind of important because once you go up 60 centimeters, which is the height of the stanchions, even a degree is quite a bit of wonkiness. To make sure I don't mess up, I've marked each of the brackets with their position. This one is B9, B for Baubo, which is Danish for port. To go along with the brackets, I've got these laser cut backing plates here. These are super nice. And they fit onto the brackets perfectly. The stainless guy did a really nice job. It's really nice that these backing plates are so accurate because that means I can use them as a template for drilling the holes through the deck hole joint. If we take a peek inside of here, you can see one of the brackets up there. That's what they look like when they're installed. The astute will note that there are threaded rods of sorts welded to the bottom of the brackets. I've gone with that solution rather than holes for through bolting them because installation is a lot easier. I can tighten the nuts here without having somebody up on deck helping me. Also, there aren't any holes in this surface here, which looks nicer and maybe perhaps it's a little bit less leak prone, but we'll see in a few years. Installing the brackets is pretty straightforward, although there are a couple of areas where getting access is gonna be a little bit of a pain in the behind. For instance, here, I need to put a bracket behind the dryer. But to be able to remove the dryer, I first need to remove the washing machine. So yeah, it just kind of snowballs a little bit. Let's grab a few doohickeys here and head up on deck. I need a backing plate, some butyl tape, a drill, stuff like that. The brackets are spaced out one meter apart and that will give me a lot less holes compared to a traditional aluminum tow rail. I've made myself a little jig to make sure that the offset from the outside edge here of the hull remains consistent. And then it is just a matter of drilling three terrifying holes in my boat. I countersink each of the holes to allow the butyl tape to get a better seal. I've started using this black butyl tape instead of the gray bedded stuff I used earlier because this stuff is available locally here in Denmark. 
And so far it's been super awesome and I've had no issues with black streaks, even though it is black. Just apply a little bit of this stuff around each of the threaded doodads. Then it's just a matter of smushing the bracket in place. And then we can head down below and secure the thing. If you look real close, you might be able to see the bracket poking out back there. Now, before I ordered the brackets, I did check to see that I cleared all of the bulkheads. Hopefully, I got that right. That's three brackets installed on both sides for a total of six brackets, only another 10 to go. As you can see, the butyl is squeezing out nicely. I will come back and tighten these a couple of times during the day. And then finally, I'll remove the little bit of squeeze out and the installation will be done. Just like that, all of the brackets are now installed on both sides of the boat. I only have one of the stanchions, so I picked up some cheap wood to make this little temporary solution. Once I've got the solar arch in place, this line here is going to attach to that at the same height as all of the stanchions. And yeah, I think it's going to look pretty dang spiffy. I'm hoping my temporary solution here will support the fenders until the real stanchions arrive. That might have looked like a quick and painless process in that time lapse, but I started at 8 o'clock and it is now 6.30. So yeah, that's a day well spent, but at least all of the brackets are now installed. Tomorrow is supposed to be another nice sunny day with less wind, which I think is perfect for figuring out the tracks for the stay sail and also for the head sail because I need to get those ordered so I can get those installed so I can apply nun skit to the deck. And yeah, after the nun skit goes on, I guess the deck is basically ready short of installing a new windlass. While I was messing around with the brackets, I found the old windlass. And uh, in fact, I have just ordered a new one of these in the 24 volt version. This is a 12 volt version. I had a really hard time choosing what anger to go with, but in the end, I decided to go with another one of these. I think this one has been on the boat since the late eighties. And uh, yeah, there's definitely a bunch of corrosion here underneath the housing but other than that when I got Athena it was in working order. If anybody around here is in the market for a very well used but functional anchor it's going to be cheap so uh, drop a comment down below and yeah I am off to the grocery store and then I'm going to have a relaxing night of not installing brackets. In the olden times meaning five years ago when I purchased Athena her head sail was sheeted in the tow rail. That was typical for the Warrior 38. I believe by the time the Warrior 40 came around most boats had tracks instead. Now because of my mini bulwark setup I can't sheet the head sail in the tow rail. My only real option is to install tracks here on the side deck which is good because it means she'll probably point a little bit better but also there's going to be stuff cluttering up the side decks but yeah that's just the way it's going to have to be. When I rebuilt the entire deck I put plywood instead of foam core in the side decks so from a strength perspective I don't really need to do anything except drill fill and drill some holes and bolt the tracks in place. I'm sure some of you are wondering why I didn't drill fill drill the holes here in the deck hole joint. That's simply just because it's solid fiberglass. There's nothing in there that can rot. So there's no reason to drill fill drill. The tracks for the head sail are gonna be pretty straightforward because it's just a nice flat deck. Now the track for the stay sail on the other hand is gonna be a little bit more complicated because there's a bit of a curvature to the deck. Well, there goes good old Obelix. I am but a poor captain yet again. My fleet has been cut 
in half. A few days ago I sold Obelix, the new owner and his dad has been staying aboard this weekend and they're just now heading out for their first sale. I am of course both happy and sad to see Obelix go. I've been living aboard her for six years and it's been great but at the same time it is also really really great just to have one boat to focus on. He's a pretty young guy, it's his first boat, but I think she's found a good home. Enough wellowing in emotions for now, let's get back to the tracks. I'm gonna use this type of track, T-Track, I'm gonna use that for both the head sail and for the stay sail. In this handy dandy document there are also instructions for how to measure for a bent track and uh, well, those instructions are what I'll use for the stay sail. I've used this piece of plywood to just measure off of and it turns out there is about five and a half centimeters worth of a gap on either the side. I don't know how much T-Track can bend without being bent, but uh, I'll check with the manufacturer. This piece of plywood is 190 centimeters long, so I'm subtracting about this much on either end. That brings us down to 180 centimeters, which I believe was the length of the old track. This represents a three meter long track for the head sail. I don't think it actually needs to be that long, but I just want to make sure that I get it long enough. One of the other warrior owners told me that they had some issues with chafe on the sheet for the tracks they fitted. The way they combated that was by putting a block in the tow rail. Of course, I can't really do that, so I just want to have the track long enough that I can put another car down here and run the sheet through that instead. It's been so long since I've seen Athena's head sail that I don't actually remember if it's a Yankee or a Genoa, but I definitely do not remember us switching the position where it was sheeted on the way home, so I don't imagine there's going to be a lot of moving the cars around. But yeah, I'd rather have the track just be a little bit too long than a little bit too short. I now have all of the measurements for the tracks. If you guys have any feedback on this, it would be great if you left a comment down below because it's a lot easier to change now before I order the tracks than after I've installed them. And if you're curious, the track I am planning on going with is the size three, the one that's 32 millimeters wide. And because I don't think we're gonna move the position of the cars a lot, I'm not gonna have any kind of setup to do that from the cockpit anything. It's just going to be a very simple setup. I mentioned the windlass yesterday. All the parts for the solar arch and the end caps for the mini bulwark are going to get laser cut. So I might as well get a backing plate for the new windlass laser cut while we're at it. Low France offers a CAD drawing for the base of the windlass on their website. So the location of the holes is going to be pretty straightforward. I just need to figure out how wide and how long I can make the backing plate. So it is into the chain locker once again. I've already drilled and filled the holes for mounting the new windlass. I did that a long time ago. So I can actually use those to tell me where the windlass is going to be located. Then I'll just measure how wide I can make that backing plate without having too much of a curve in it. I am going to aim for, let's say, 35 centimeters wide and 40 centimeters long. That'll make the backing plate a fair bit wider than the base of the windlass and also quite a bit longer. Here inside of the settee is where one of Athena's water tanks is going to be located. I just want to clear all of this stuff out of there so I can grab some measurements. I spent hours earlier looking for the biggest off the shelf tank I could buy and put in here. But the biggest I'd be able to fit was around 100 liters and there would be tons of wasted space. When I purchased Athena, she had a water tank in here. That's typical for the Warriors 38 and 40s, but it won't fit anymore because of the hydronic heating. And also the new settee is not the same size as the old one. Plus there's a bunch of rust and stuff. So I think a new tank is in order. With the custom made tank, it looks like we're gonna end up right around 210 liters here. That is more than double what I could fit with an off the shelf tank. So I think that merits the added expense of a custom made tank. In terms of connections, it's gonna be a super simple tank. There's a 38 millimeter connection for a deck fill, a pickup, and some kind of connection to either a manifold or directly to the water maker. And there's a hole for a tank center and maybe some kind of access port doodad. Hopefully the stainless guy will have time to squeeze me in before we need to leave. That would be amazing. But uh, yeah, now I have a ton of stuff to tidy up. 
Having to move a ton of stuff back and forth is kind of annoying, but it's also kind of nice because then you come across your little buried treasures. This, which I haven't shown you guys yet, is Athena's new autopilot ready to be installed. But uh, yeah, we'll get back to this guy maybe next month. Next on my to-do list for this weekend is to start modifying the aft cabin to be able to fit eight of those lithium cells. My plan is to have them lined up this way, so I'll have to remove this bit of the old bunk, make a new front for it, and some kind of bottom. I've cut out a big chunk of the old front. I figured I could use the little bit of that that's tabbed to the hull down there to help support the bottom in the battery compartment. So yeah, let's figure out some kind of shelf bottom situation. And just like that, my little beauties have a flat surface to sit on. And now we also have a little front. I'll add something going across here because as you can see, the hull is exposed down here. And if I don't cover that up, that's just gonna lead to some really annoying condensation issues. But it's getting a little bit late in the day and I don't wanna annoy the people around me. So I better stop generating noise. So I'll resume the sawing tomorrow. Last night, I started looking at port lights for the aft cabin and for the technical compartment. I'm gonna be spending a fair chunk of time in the aft cabin over the next couple of months. And I figured it might be nice with a little bit more light in there and also some ventilation. I want to install a port light in this area here, maybe a little bit further down. The only challenge is that this stuff is 40 millimeters thick, which is too thick for any of the port lights I've found. I'll come up with some sort of fix for that and then hopefully in the next couple of weeks I can get a port light installed in there just to make it a little bit easier to work in there, get some more light in there. The reason I wanted to start the battery compartment this week was so that I could figure out how to secure the cells and also how to compress them a little bit because I need a bunch of parts for that and I might as well get those parts laser cut with all the other stuff. Let me make a couple more modifications to that area and then you should be able to get a good idea of what it's going to look like. Ta-da! Now I've only put two of the eight cells in there. The remaining cells are gonna be placed in between those two. Notice how there's an air gap all the way around the batteries. And uh, yeah, I think that's gonna work out really well. It looks like I've got about four centimeters worth of clearance between the top of the batteries and the bottom of the bunk. I think I can bump that up by another two centimeters or so by lowering the bottom of the battery compartment. And that I think will help a lot later on. Other than that, I'm pretty pleased with this. There's plenty of room to add some insulation towards the engine compartment over here and also on the hull to prevent condensation. I've also got room to make some kind of ventilation setup to keep the temperature as low as possible and also room for some kind of heating setup. For the heating setup, I'm considering three different options. The first option is to do nothing for now, because for now we only really are gonna have the next winter in the UK, and it's probably not gonna get cold enough there that it's gonna be an issue in that compartment to keep the temperature above freezing, considering that we are living aboard the boat. The second option is to run a loop from the hydronic heating setup through that compartment, have a return valve on there to make sure I can maintain roughly 15 degrees Celsius in there. Or the third option, which would be easier, is just to add some of these uh, silicon heating mats in there to heat it if that becomes necessary. The reason I wanna cool and heat that compartment is because when we're charging or discharging at high C rate, we are gonna generate a little bit of heat. I don't know how much heat yet, but we do need to get rid of some heat from the battery. So we'll figure that out once the batteries are installed. But also you're not supposed to charge lithium batteries when the temperature of the cells are below, I think it's zero or right around zero degrees Celsius. While this video is rendering, I'll get busy figuring out the brackets for securing the lithium cells and you guys will see those in an upcoming video but I do have to start rendering this video now even though it is early in the day over the last couple of weeks I've had a ton of issues rendering the videos I don't know if that's due to a software update or the new camera but yeah it is hellishly annoying 
This week I have spent a fair chunk of time finalizing the sale of Obelix, just fixing the last little things like changing the impeller, going over the boat with the new owner, helping him bend on the sails, helping him clean the reflex stove, just a, a bunch of stuff like that. But next week, seeing as I've only got one boat now, I should be back to working on Athena 100%. I gotta remember to update my little board here and with Obelix both cleaned and sold, I can now go ahead and move this task over into the done column. And on that little bit of a mixed bag of emotions, I'm gonna end this week's video here. I hope to see all of you guys back here aboard Athena next week for yet more DIY fun. As always, feel free to leave a comment down below and don't forget, if you've enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like. See you.